This is Wednesday the 7th or 6th. Yesterday we actually went to London for a Pixie event, as you see it saw previously. And uh, she came back late, like 10 past 10 at night. Again, she was meant to go today uh, to London for a different event, which is a last minute booking. And I just told her, are you, are you gonna go again tomorrow? Don't you wanna just cancel today and rest up? You know, like, why would you wear yourself thin every single day of the week? Because then it just takes a toll on your body. I just told her, forget about it today. You, you have to go tomorrow as well. You've done yesterday, just sleep in today. So she's sleeping in right now. Self care it should be number one. Looking after yourself over money, over everything else. If you can look after yourself, then everything else will come naturally. That's my personal opinion anyway. Actually, the day before, we had a leak behind our uh, washing machine. So as you can see up here, so you see the water inlet pipe, that pipe there, right? It was leaking, so I put a bucket here yesterday. So I thought initially that the pipe might have been bust because sometimes it happens, pipes burst, right? Uh, then I did some investigation, I thought, let me go and see what it's like. I looked at the pipe, it's made out of rubber, so I thought that ain't gonna break. Yeah, I, I could see a lot of lime scale built around the top where it's connected to the tap. I thought, okay, let me just take it out, clean it up and see what happened. So I took it out, I dipped it into lemon juice. The lemon juice is brilliant to get rid of lime scale, right? So I dipped it in there, left it for quite some time, came back, uh, all the lime scale was gone and then I screwed it back on, ran the washing machine and it's working fine again, it's not been leaking overnight. So that's a good tip for some people who have leak coming from pipes. Usually what happens is lime scale, they build up, they create little gaps for water to leak out. So instead of just changing the pipe or getting an engineer which costs an arm and a leg, you can basically do it yourself. How you doing? What are you doing? I'm in a bit of a sort out today. Okay. Do you feel hot? It feels nice. I, can't I feel comfortable. Babe, I turned this one off like must have done it last night because yeah. I felt the breeze again this morning. Yeah. And then this morning, oh. like literally not even this morning, like an hour ago, I turned the temperature up and it's gone hot. Like I feel hot now. It's not even that much of an eyesore, right? Like if you yeah. go back. Yeah, I have this radiator put in you guys, so for those of you who followed our vlogs through our home extension vlogs, you remember this was the garage. The garage used to stand here. Um, Let me go from a distance. They kind of, Let's they see. didn't um, build in the garage, they broke the garage down, right? They broke yeah. the garage and the utility room down and they built this new room. Now when you're building this room, <laughs> anyone who's done building work and the builder knows what it's like. You know what I am saying right now when I say that you just learn so much in retrospect. When they were building this room, I said to the builder, you know what, it's, is it gonna get cold? Because that's an external wall, it's a detached house, right? Hmm. So you get a lot of cold coming in from the external wall. He was like, oh no, 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 that radiator's fine. You look at that thin, it's one of those like pretty looking radiators, but not very good at heating the room. It basically does nothing. So you'd walk into this room and a draft would hit you. Like this room was so cold, which is fine. Like when I'm in here doing my makeup and doing filming, I don't really feel it because um, of the lighting, because the lighting em emits a lot of heat. So I don't feel it. And then once winter hit, mm -hmm. oh my God, this room used to get so cold. So initially I was like, okay, we're gonna have to put a bay window radiator in here, one of those curved ones. Um, but that involved having to connect to another pipe through there and that meant like breaking through my beloved shoe cabinet or taking it out at least Breaking the wall behind it mm. and then somehow working around it break like just I could not be bothered to take the cornice off and everything And I think the thought of just doing any more building structural work was gonna drive me over the edge I was like I'm done with building so I did a bit of no I did a lot of research a lot of research mm. and I find this radiator on Amazon it is amazing, you guys. It has one of those, um, it sounds like I'm a clay. salesperson right now, but it actually works, right? Vol volcanic ashes or something, right? Not volcanic ashes, it's like, I think it's a clay center. So yeah. It has a clay core, 
um, whatever material they've used, I'm pretty sure it's clay, uh, is excellent at retaining heat. So what happens is that out of one hour you heat it, it heats for about 15 minutes and then for 45 minutes it's off. So it's not using the electricity for the whole hour, it's using 15 minutes of every hour. And it has a thermostat, so like, just if you like look down there, I don't know how old you will see, just stick yeah. the camera around there. Down here, look, there's a thermostat, oh my god, you can literally feel the heat. Really can you see? see it. Pass it me, actually. Yeah, I'm going to cool. I set it on 18 when I want a bit of coolness in the room and 19 when I want it to be warm. And it's literally, that little thing is heating this entire room. It's actually amazing. My mind is blown. Yeah. Isn't Before like we used to walk? feel a draft when we used to walk through here, right? It, now was you like, don't... it was like a chilly, painful, the floor used to be cold on that side of the room. Yeah. Because the draft was coming in through the window. And we thought the curtains would fix the problem. It didn't. Yeah, it gives you flexibility to exactly. move it out as well, doesn't it? Because I might just, in the future, I might get a proper um, a built-in radiator put in here, like a gas one, yeah. and take this out to our cabin. Yeah. Possibly, depending. Um, so it gives us that flexibility because if we bought the casters for it as well. Mm -hmm. And here, that's my little radiator. Yeah. Apart from that, I'm just sorting my makeup out. I had like the worst headache yesterday. Yeah. And Hubsy Jan let me sleep in today. Thank you. You're feeling better now? I feel tons better. I think it was just like I'm kind of jet lagged because Dubai was like go, 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 go. Yeah. And I don't think like we were just caught up in the whirl of everything. Yeah. Um, and then I think. The Are you jet still ride buzzing from your boat ride? Oh my god, it was such a bug. Oh, I got this through the post yeah. today, which is, check it out. It's called Lush Lash Eyelash Enhancing Serum. Okay. By Wild Mint. I saw their ads on, um, I think Instagram, their ads kept coming up yeah. on my feed. And uh, my sister, the si same sister who got me into the facelifting machine, you guys remember, which is here, which they very kindly hooked me up with a ton of their stuff. Mm -hmm as a thank you. That sister told me that I should try eyelash enhancing serums and that they're supposed to be amazing and I think that one of her friends tried it out so these guys, so I'm definitely going to try these guys one out because the ones, that, like the before and afters that they show in the ads look amazing and once my falsies fall out, which Saffron did, I don't know, that girl's got magic in her hands because her lashes last for ages for me. Um, once these fall out, I'm going to try this out, the eyelash enhancing serum. So comment if you guys want to know about the journey overall, or if you want feedback on this, same way that I did with my stretch mark cream. I'll probably try it out for, I mean, they say, apparently this works in like 14 days. I don't think I need it. If you look at my eyelashes. I know. You know what guys? I'm it's like sure. the cruelest joke ever that men have good eyelashes. No, it's just my genetics actually. Cream blushes are my jam right now. I need to put all this stuff away. Yeah. And I need to sort my albums out. Oh yeah, we're doing a vision board for YFC on here and this is going to have our vision for 2019, 2020. No, this uh, is my life vision. Babe. Oh, is this your life vision? Yeah. Okay, it's your life it vision. Like my life yeah. vision, yeah. Will it have my vision on it as well? No, just yours. It has to be mine, babe. Vision boards vision. are like for each person. I just go with the flow. Okay. Make each day count, just go with the flow, that's my motto. When's the last time you looked at these? Oh, what's that? What is that? Well, I'm not in my Al Hijab, so let me cover this. Oh, who's that handsome looking guy? I'm not in my Al Hijab, oh, wow. but you can see what I was wearing. That must my be me. Blue. So I wanted, I'm wearing blue for my Walima and I'm wearing peach for my Nagah day. I can't believe I was 24 here. Yeah. Look how humongous. That's not even me nine months. Oh my god, we still need to do the breastfeeding video as well. Oh, yes, we do. Should we do it now? Quickly. You don't want to do a sit down setup? No, I think I like doing this. So, Alina Sehajik said, My question about breastfeeding Did you breastfeed to sleep or your babies learned how to self soothe? Okay, so, should we do some background info first? Yep. I breastfed both of my kids for a year. I wanted to be fair. Um, when Lovebug was born, um, I was planning on breastfeeding for two years. However, some personal things happened, which meant that I had to go away for a couple of days. Nothing between us. Yeah. Well, we making assumptions. I had to be there for a friend um, because some very big things had happened in her life. So I had to leave. And so I had to stop breastfeeding sooner than I wanted. And it was a really, really hard decision, but I don't regret it. Um, so I had to 
go. And so he was about one year old. So I wanted to keep it fair between both of them. So I did leans for one year as well. I exclusively breastfed both of them. The first time with Lovebug was way harder than the second time with leans. Um, and we're talking, I got very depressed. I struggled. Um, I had latching problems. I um, thought that I wasn't making enough milk. Yeah. Um, a lot of people made me doubt myself. A lot yeah. of people were like, just give him the bottle. You're just not giving him enough. He's too skinny. He's too this and that. I think part of the problem is that uh, societal pressures and um, a lot of the things that people around you tell you puts that mental strain on people. Uh, especially new mothers, they're already going through a lot and I think the pressures that other people put them through I think you have to learn to kind of just ignore them to an extent maybe some of it is sound advice, you have to go with the gut instinct um, never feel like pressured into doing things that you don't feel comfortable with or you don't have to feel shame over having to do certain things I know mothers who have had babies they go through all sorts of sorts of internal problems whether it's depression whether it's milk supply whether it's uh, other hormonal issues right and there's pl plenty of others that i probably don't know of right everyone knows their own what happened is that lovebug was born mm. um just under six pounds so he was really small right mm. and he was born early because i was doing all these things to facilitate labor and then i went for this um pressure point facial and it kick-started labor yeah whatever but it was fine he was one day short if he was born one day earlier he'd have had to stay in um ICU, ICU right mm. because then he'd be classed as premature but he was bang on 37 weeks your breast size changes right when you get pregnant and for me, I, re I knew I was pregnant because literally three days after conception from then I noticed changes mm. so when I when the milk came in oh my gosh the breast size was out of control and so here he is he's absolutely tiny and he couldn't latch on he had major latching on problems and there was nobody around for support i'm talking nobody that i knew because i was like the first person in amongst my sisters to have a baby no one knew what to say to me i had literally nobody for support um my extended family no one was there for support no one was there to give me advice um my sister-in-law herself had just had a baby, she didn't have support herself. So it was like, no one was there to say to me, right, I'm going to try this or try this, do this. And so I, I suffered. Um, and I remember I would stay up, like, he'd be crying for hours and hours. And people would be like, you know, why are you making him cry? Just give him, just give him a bottle. And I was like, no, but my body, I feel it. I felt it in my heart and my soul that my body was built to do this naturally, just the same way that I did labour. Right? I just felt it in my gut and I was like, I cannot bow into what everyone else wants. I can't cave in. So obviously I wouldn't do it to the point where he was ill. Like he was still having some nappies, wet nappies. Um, I didn't want to put his life in danger kind of thing. But I knew I was making the milk. It just, he couldn't latch. So I remember this so clearly. I was really, really down. And this is about a good solid couple of days, maybe about a week into trying. And I was like sleepless nights, like literally hallucinating to the, you know, so sleep deprived that I was literally hallucinating when I was sleeping. Um, and I remember one, there was like no one at home, everyone had gone out. I was staying at my mom's at the time and I just broke down. And I was just crying and crying. I felt so inadequate. I felt so much shame. Um, I just feel so, I wish I could go back and just give that me a hug. Um, and in a last attempt to do something about the situation, I googled um, like breastfeeding support because I was looking on forums anyway and I found this helpline number for um, La Lesh League, I think that's what they were called, which is like a breastfeeding support helpline. Can we walk and talk? Yeah. So I rang them and the woman on the, on the phone was actually amazing, like I finally felt like someone was there to give me sound advice and she said to me to try massaging the breast to help the milk flow, to help the baby to take the milk. She also suggested rugby ball position for the baby, which mm. means you don't feed the baby like this, you feed the baby like this. So yeah. you put a pillow back here, you sit down comfortably, and then you hold the head like this. Yeah. And that way, if the baby is having trouble latching on due to the breast size and the yeah. baby's size, then that alleviates that that issue or yeah. size. So I think those pillows like really that. help as well, like, you know, the one that go the around. The breastfeeding pillows, yeah. Yeah, they really help. Yeah. really help as yeah. well. 
But for you to give like this, oh my god, lifesaver. Honestly, like I just have so much good energy for that woman. I prayed for that woman who helped me out because she was like my actual final lifeline. Um, because I think I would just mentally, I was just, I had like postpartum blues, I was struggling so much anyway. I felt really heavy, people were commenting on my weight and that was like that final like glimmer of hope. So, some people are so ridiculous, she's just given birth, right? And they're like, oh, you look different. Oh, it looks like you put on a bit of weight. Are you stupid? Like, she's just given birth. You know what I mean? You put on a bit of weight in different areas of your body, right? And you're gonna like pick up on those things. Let pe women who have just given birth go. Let them put on weight if they put on weight. Let them lose weight if they put, look, have lost weight. Once the latching problem was sorted, it was all uphill from there. It was yeah. excellent. And I learned so much. So, Lidl's time, it was super easy. From the moment she was born, she latched on, that's it. Yeah, forget the mo I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I didn't even keep the Moses basket with her. She slept with me, next to me, on my arm. I breastfeed her, lying down, straight away. Whereas with Lumbug, I had to wait a while till he was bigger. So. I actually remember that time because on the bed I used to sleep, you know on the wooden part on the side of the bed, I used to sleep on that. So the question is, did I let them self-soothe, which means you allow the baby to go to sleep without suckling, um, or did I breastfeed them to sleep? And the answer is, I breastfed them to sleep. I'm very much a believer of follow nature, and if that's what the baby wants by nature, that urge has been created within it for a reason. And so I would just, I didn't give a dummy to either of them. Literally, I was the human dummy. Mm. So they would fall asleep, suckling, and I was fine with that. It meant, obviously, that I was tied to the bed a lot. Like, I was breastfeeding a lot. That's all I seemed to be doing, especially in the beginning. And by the time Leeds was born, I, I became a lot more gutsy as well. Motherhood does that to you in that if people were visiting and I was breastfeeding, I would say, I'm breastfeeding, I can't come down with the baby. Whereas when Lovell was born, I had to keep stopping. And even though I was struggling, like I struggled to make him latch, I would still break that latch and go and take the baby down to show the guests, because um, I was at my mom's house. Whereas with Leans, literally, I said that I would discharge myself if they wouldn't let me go from the hospital. I didn't let them keep me overnight, because I was fine, right? Um, yeah, firecracker. So I was like, I'm going home today. Right, so the day she was born, I went home, I did stay at my mom's, I went straight to my house and literally just got straight back into it. So they're two totally different experiences, but both times I allowed the babies to suckle to sleep, okay? And it was fine. Like, it's not like they became overly attached or it was particularly hard to get them to stop breastfeeding. The fact that they fed to sleep didn't affect that whatsoever. Just not as to shopping. Any on achieving a good latch so I've just gone through that and what helps a good latch it's so important especially if you're a first-time mum make sure a midwife looks at how the baby is latching onto the nipple so important don't, don't just think because the nipples in the baby's mouth that it's latched properly if it's not not latched properly the baby is not going to suck the milk properly therefore there'll be milk build up in the breast ducts now if there's build up in the ducts and that is a continuous thing that happens and you don't empty the milk, then you end up with something called mastitis, which means the, the ducts get blocked and it will give you like a fever, you'll get really ill, you could even be hospitalized. Like it's pretty serious. Or you could just have like a mild, mild fever and that will indicate that the, the milk isn't being emptied properly. So make sure that the latch is done properly. Don't just think just because the, the nipples in the baby's mouth, the baby's drinking properly. It's got to be the nipples going to come under the baby's tongue um, and the baby's got to have like, like the mouth fully around the nipple. There's a way, there's a correct way and you'll be able to hear the baby drinking as well. But when you're a first time mom, obviously you've never done that before, so how are you gonna know? So make, please make sure that the midwife has checked it and when they come for the checkup um, at your house, that they are checking then and rechecking. So super duper important. And if the milk does get blocked, if you do end up with blocked ducts, then there are ways to help to alleviate that. You can put on warm compresses, you know, stand under a warm shower. You can also get a breast pump. And I'll get onto that in a second because I think someone's asking about breast pumps. Okay. 
but yeah the latch is very important and I feel like it's most important on your first time round because it is harder the first time round for some reason I just felt like my body knew what it was doing the second time round so it didn't it wasn't quite as much of a shock to the body I didn't gain quite as much weight I didn't swell all over the way I did with my first baby uh, and like recovery from labor was way quicker second time round as well okay so um, Khadija's asking what breast pump would you recommend I had the Medela one I know now that they now they've got like double breast pumps and all the rest of that um, I do not recommend the manual ones I mean you're in already so much pain and you're healing from labor the last thing you want to do is like sit there and manually pump breast pumps are amazing um, it helped Lovebug's time because he wasn't suckling properly in the beginning I would thankfully I never ended up with um, blocked ducts because when the breasts felt full and what happens is that they become engorged with milk when the milk comes in and so it feels like there's like rocks inside your breast to empty the, the milk um, breast pumps are a lifesaver so I did it with Lovebug and then at Leans' time even though everything was going smoothly I still kept a breast pump and I would pump in between when she was feeding to increase my milk supply and just to make sure that everything was empty I didn't want to risk infection because I'd seen it happen to people I wanted a, an electric breast pump Lovebug's time I used the same one at Leans' time How did you deal with going out in public and shopping in people's houses? Um, I found it really uncomfortable back then. Uh, I would have a breast cover, a breastfeeding cover rather. Um, and so if we were out, I would like go and find a discreet little spot and breastfeed. Used to go into the changing rooms, that remember? Really bad. Yeah, when I was in town, I'd go into changing rooms. But yeah, I remember that. In restaurants and stuff, I would just go and hide in the corner. But even sometimes I used to go in the car. I remember I used to go yeah, to the I used car. Yeah, go in the car. But even when I was discreetly in the corner of a restaurant, babe, yeah. I felt so so embarrassed. Yeah. And I can't, looking back now, I'm kind of like, hello, I had a cover on? Why did I feel so, in fact, like the shame that is put upon something so natural? I mean, I was in my 20s then, I was a lot more unsure about myself. I, I, I didn't, I hadn't had therapy, I wasn't going through healing, I hadn't, I didn't know why I felt this way. And there was just so much going on that I didn't understand that I just felt this unnecessary shame over so much stuff. Um, and that's why I'm such an advocate now for supporting women because I've been through it. What if people tried to push you to give formula? Oh my God, so many people did. Um, a lot of people from like the older generation because I don't even get why because they breastfed themselves. I know, they're usually advocates for breast. So, yeah. but they weren't advocates. Like a lot of, I think they just stressed that the baby wasn't being healthy. Yeah. The baby wasn't fat enough. So people did try and push me too. And I think at the time, because I was already so emosh, I would just snap. I'd just be like, just leave me alone, baby stuff. And then I slowly learned that um, that's not the best way um, because it wouldn't make them stop. Uh, the thing that made people stop was my own confidence. Um, and I would basically say to them, my body went through labor naturally. My body is naturally able to give my baby what it needs. And I'll tell you what, you guys, is a very, very slim percentage, very small percentage of women whose bodies don't make enough milk. It does exist, but it's a much smaller percentage than you would think because a lot of women get made to think that their body's not making enough. Here's the thing, right? Day one, you're going to have colostrum anyway, right? Which is not the white milk. The clear stuff that comes out, that's colostrum. High in fat, it's got all the good stuff that your baby needs. Just think of it this way. Your body is going to do what it needs to do at a certain time, exactly at the same time that the body, baby's body is doing what it needs to do at that time. You're in sync you're in sync with each other it's such a beautiful process and so your milk doesn't come in it can your milk can come in still several days after giving birth and people don't always realize this so you have to just make sure that the baby is suckling the suckling action triggers hormones to be released there are nerves in your breasts that will communicate with your brain and your brain will send signals back to the milk ducts in basically encouraging lactation, encouraging milk to be produced. So the baby, the more the baby is suckling, the sooner your milk will come and you'll get a better supply as well. Now, if like in the Asian culture, you get like a bazillion people turning up to see the baby and you get this pressure from everyone to go and show, present the baby, um, that is going to hinder your milk supply because that gives less time for the baby to suckle. The baby should just be on the boob for ages in the first few days. It just is what it is. There's nothing abnormal about it. That is how it should be. Because otherwise the body clock, the body's biology is not going to support the milk supply.
That makes sense. But yeah. the, it's a bit so, like an engine, isn't it? Yeah. So when people did it, in the end, I was I was just very firm in what I believed, and you have to stand by it. And having a good support system makes all the difference. So for those of you who don't have that, my heart goes out to you. And just consider me like your mom, your mama, who's there encouraging you, telling you you can do it. That's all you need, really. Okay, Miss Akila, did you lose weight when you breastfed? I lost because I lost a lot of weight. Um, I didn't actually. I was so hungry when I breastfed. I was hungry all the time. I used to eat basically whatever my craving was, whatever I wanted to eat, I ate when I was breastfeeding because I was like, hey, the baby needs the food and I need the extra calories to create the milk, so I'm gonna give the baby everything that the baby needs by eating extra. <laughs> so I ate a lot, I didn't lose the weight. I think towards the end of breastfeeding, around month eight or nine, some weight started to come off. And then when I stopped breastfeeding, um, and I started to like, do better with looking after myself, um, and I started to incorporate a lot more working out into my routine, that's when the weight started to come off. What else did you ask me? Um, what month did your baby start having food like baby biscuits? So both of them, I started giving them solids around three months. Um, and that was just like baby rice or baby porridge. It wasn't anything, it wasn't like heavy solids. Well, I started off really slow at three months. Um, how do you know that your baby is full? If you're, when your baby's full, Um, your baby will stop having the milk. You'll know your baby's full because your baby will pull away. Um, and then you can burp them, because sometimes they'll stop drinking because they just need a burp. Yeah. You burp them and then you can put them back on and if they don't want it, they'll move away from your nipple. Yeah, would you say babies cry for one or two reasons? They need a feed or they're in pain? Um, yeah. And uh, you can usually tell which one's which, right? If you know your child. Oh, you know. someone said Tessa. So then she's 37 weeks at that time, so she's had a baby by now, so congrats. Um, and said she'll be trying the raspberry leaf tea. I'd be curious to know your experience with it. Remember that you shouldn't have raspberry leaf tea when you are breastfeeding, because it can stop your blood supply. Okay, so you stop it after the baby's born. Um, okay. This cat wants to come in. Come in, baby. Okay, so how did you wean your kids, Axe? I am Coulson. Um, I started to, oh, I just kept them away from me. You know, when I was trying to get them to stop breastfeeding, uh, I just kept them away from me because once they smell you, they'll want it. Um, so obviously a supportive partner is what you need or anybody, anyone else who can take the baby um, when it's wanting your breast. Um, and because it was after one year, um, I had started to, so what I did at one year was I start, they didn't take, um, what's it called, good night milk. I tried it, they didn't take, Lobo didn't Mickey take down. to it. Oh my God, is she on the surface? That's not nice. Mickey, Mickey down. get down. Down, Mickey. She keeps doing that. Down, Mickey. There's a new cat in the area and Mickey's just breaking rules now. Mickey. Mickey, get down, I need to wipe it off, that's nasty. Mickey, don't do Okay, um, so around one year, what I started to do was I took regular full fat cow's milk and I diluted it with um, distilled water, so sterilized water. I, so I would like water it down and then as time went along I would put less and less water in so that's how I got them into cow's milk although at, at one point I want to get them off dairy altogether into something why something similar to what I do um, that's a different video altogether though that's what I did with regards to weaning them and also by then they were having solids so I would give them like mushy rice I would steam um, carrots and blend them um, broccoli uh, chicken. I was basically like steaming and mushing everything. <laughs> yeah, I did. I thought I'd try it. It says organic and free range. Have you guys used this before? I saw, I've never noticed milk? it before. Yeah, yeah, it's cow's milk, but it's free range and organic. Okay. So I was like, hmm, it's like 30p more than what we normally pay. Um, someone's asking why I'm doing it because as I said, I'm very passionate about helping to share knowledge um, and what I know and to support women who don't have that they might not even have like a mother figure in their lives. And I don't mind if you guys think of me as, as your mama. Even if they do have a mother figure, not all mother figures. Hopefully that means you're the dada. Hmm? We're mom and dad for all the girls. Oh, I've got many kids. That's all the questions under that picture. I'm the type of man that will take carry everything in one hand and make more school trips. Oh, increasing milk supply. So there's this amazing thing. I took a picture of it ages ago. I'll try and find it and insert it. It's this thing that you get in Asian shops and it's called 
makana, right babe? So what you do with it mm. is you take a, a, a lot of ghee, so you mm. take ghee and you basically fry the makana in the ghee, take a generous amount of ghee. Mm. They soak up the ghee and they cook and they get a little bit crunchy and they're quite nice. And I think it's because of the fat content or something to do with the plant as well. Listen, I there's, there's stuff that I don't accept in terms of old wives tales and there's stuff that I feel like there is hidden wisdom in it, especially if you've tried and tested it. And also if there's scientific backing to some of it as well. Yeah. You know, I'm very like, it's got a it's got a legit work. Like, you know, those teething necklaces, there is a scientific back, backing to it. Like we used to think, is it like a superstitious thing or what? Yeah, no. um, but there isn't, there's actually recent, it's, it can be backed up by hard proof. Yeah. Anyway, that's why we did it. But back to that. So you fry them mm -hmm. and you eat, say about five to 10 of them every day. And oh my God, you guys, when I started doing that, my milk supply went so high both times. So that works. That, loads of water um, and like chicken soup yeah. with roti. Um, Don't eat spicy stuff because apparently that can affect the bit milk supply i don't know well, if it's it true it goes through to the baby everything you ha put in your body yeah. a bit of that will go go to the baby but do you think the spices i mean if you have masala in your food they'll just get used to masala growing up no but that's just like in the first few days because like, their tummies understand are how the flavors get into the food because their tummies are still so sensitive and small and developing so first few days yeah you should try and avoid it and just have more bland food yeah. but um, so and like, then heavy yeah, stuff like oh yeah porridge your also don't taste like chicken is it no babe, what do you mean? Are you such I'm just a man saying. Um, porridge also helps girls yeah. loads. Like, you know, um, oats, barley, porridge, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, like kind of heavier stuff, if that makes sense. Nuts. Um, Nuts and then there's like methi, which is like, yeah. There's methi as well. Guys, just a quick one before I finish. This is on the phone over there. Um, I also remembered another thing, which funnily enough, I'm wearing something that helps to correct it now. I'm wearing this posture corrector right now. You're meant to wear it for like an hour every day to help to improve your posture. A lot of women when they are breastfeeding or in pregnancy or after they have kids, the breast size and shape can change. So for some women, they um, have an increase in breast size. And for me, that made me so self-conscious. It really, again, looking back, I can't believe how it affected my self-esteem and so what I would do is I started to hunch so I didn't feel as though my breast size was so like in your face um, and that because I did that in my first um, pregnancy or after my first pregnancy and that kind of stayed with me and although since I started working out my posture is so much better sometimes I can feel that slip a little bit with my with my back posture and it's just a totally subconscious thing um where you start to hunch over so i'm wearing this for now so these are available i think my sister got this off groupon or something they're on amazon as well um and so I, i've been starting to wear that and it's made a big difference like the posture gets better for longer the more you train it so that's it i hope that you guys found this breastfeeding video useful and um i'll see you in our next vlog